Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News. And if you are tuning in, you are probably smarter than the average bear. Uh, let me cover some things that are not not my desktop. Um, so this is pretty cool from Huffington Post. 10,000 farmers and ranchers endorse Green New Deal in letter to Congress. Farmers and ranchers, you don't say. You mean those wild, wild-eyed, liber- you know, uh, lefties, communists, socialists? The support comes as the climate policy fight broadens from energy and transportation to agriculture. Nearly 10,000 farmers and ranchers are endorsing the Green New Deal as the climate policy battle- battleground expands from the oil fields to the agricultural fields. In a letter sent to Congress on Wednesday morning, the newly formed bipartisan coalition. U.S. farmers and ranchers for a Green New Deal threw its weight behind the sweeping industrial plan outlined in a resolution that Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez proposed in February. But zeroing out the country's planet, heating emissions by mid-century requires a transformation in agriculture as dramatic as shifting the energy sector away from fossil fuels, the letter says. We believe these climate goals are achievable, the letter argues but only if the GND includes policies that spur two large-scale transitions, the transition away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy alternatives and the transition away from the industrial agriculture toward family ba- uh, farm-based organic and regenerative farming and land use practices that improve soil health and draw down and sequester carbon. Huzzah! The letter was signed by more than 500 individual farmers and 50 organizations representing close to 10,000 members. Regeneration International, a sustainable farming nonprofit, organized the missive with the climate justice group Sunrise Movement. It also hosted uh, a Wednesday morning press conference in Washington. A month ago, the United Nations released a dire new report urging major changes to food production and land management and warning that emissions cuts alone will fall short of halting catastrophic global warming. Um, Taking cues from those pushing for a Green New Deal, several Democratic presidential hopefuls have made farming practices central to their climate proposals. Bernie Sanders earmarked at $410 billion in his Green New Deal proposal to help Farms of all sizes transition to ecologically regenerative uh, agricultural practices. Elizabeth Warren called for breaking up agriculture monopolies as part of her broad rural platform. And uh, Pete Buttigieg vowed to support farmers by paying them to capture carbon. Even as farmers reel from the effects of President Donald Trump's trade war with China, Democratic candidates are far from guaranteed their votes. Farmers supported the Trump administration's proposal last week to finalize the rollback of the Obama-era waters uh, of the U.S. waters of the U.S. rule, which had put new restrictions on which waterways agribusiness could pollute. Early on, Republican opposition to the Green New Deal itself coalesced around the idea that such a program would ban beef production, although supporters have clearly said it would not. We call on Congress to put the green in the Green New Deal. Wednesday's letter reads by empowering us to revitalize the health and economy security, economic security of this country's middle class, to make family farming economically viable again, and to help reverse climate change and improve America's air and water quality by making our ecosystems healthy again. Um, Again, Bernie Sanders has the most robust and far-reaching Green New Deal plan. If you care about the climate, I can't say it enough. If you really, really care about the climate, you will you will not vote for anyone else but Bernie Sanders. Uh, doing so means that you kind of care. Sort of. Um, he is the only candidate who... He has the most robust climate uh, Green New Deal plan, and he also is the only candidate who fully, fully wants to implement Medicare for all and knows how to do that. All of the other candidates, including Elizabeth Warren, are waffling or using language in their proposals that allow private insurance companies to to keep existing, therefore taking out the legs of real medical care for all. 
uh, I don't trust him. If you really, really support Medicare for all, you will vote for Bernie Sanders. And <clears throat> to back this up, <clears throat> even Trump thinks uh, Trump privately tells confidence, uh, confidants that socialism won't be so easy to beat in 2020. So he knows. <laughs> he knows how popular this is. Um, you know, as much as the right likes to, you know, knock on uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, her proposals and platforms are very popular, extremely popular. Um and that's why she is so popular, and they, they hate it. It drives them batshit crazy. And president is not totally sold on the attack line that he and his te- team have made so central to their campaign. So their, their whole thing, and you hear it all the time on Fox News, is you know, crazy, radical left. Insane, right, you know, lefty, communist, socialist, just you know, lunatics. They just try to paint them as the most you know, ridiculous people ever. Uh, But fear not, dear progressives, because all of those programs and policies are way, way more popular than Trump is right now. As he campaigns for re-election, Donald Trump and his team have made trashing the socialists or communists in the 2020 Democratic presidential field a cornerstone of their messaging. In In private, however, the president often strikes a different tone. A more nuanced tone, uh, one driven by a concern that socialism, at least as defined by the Democrats, may actually sell politically. This year, Trump has repeatedly told friends and donors that running against socialism in a general election may not be so easy, quote unquote, because of its populist draw. So, so here's what happened is that, you know, Bernie Sanders gained popularity in 2016 because of his socialist platform, but... He didn't gain it fast enough, and he was also cheated out of the dom- nomination or a fair shot of the nomination by the Clinton uh, machine. <clears throat> but it just he, he didn't gain popularity fast enough to overtake that whole thing. So now the entire Democratic field is trying to sound like Bernie Sanders because they realize how popular he and his platform is, and they're doing everything they can to drive him out of the race and shut him down and shut him up. And Trump knows he's in trouble. He's in big trouble. Uh, According to a person who was in the room, Trump told donors at a recent private event that that though a lot of people think it'll be easy to beat in 2020, the truth is it might not be so easy. The president, according to the source, said that you can have someone who loves Trump, but many people love free stuff too. He added that if, if candidates tell Americans, especially young voters, that they're going to cancel their debt, that's a tough one to run against. So here's the deal. You don't have to impeach Trump. You don't have to waste all that energy. You don't have to give him a win. Because if you try to impeach Trump, you just make him look like a victim. You don't have to do this. What you have to do is run a populist, left, socialist candidate, strong policies in the Democratic race against Trump, and you will win. If you try to run a centrist who nobody cares about, you'll lose. If you try to run somebody who wants, wants to sound like they're progressive, but is kind of hedging their bets and lying, you will lose because it's going to be pointed out that they're lying. They're going to be fallible. If you, if you run somebody who's authentically socialist and progressive, that would be one Bernie Sanders. You will win, hands down. <clears throat> uh... Anyways, and, you know, here's a little, (laughs) just as an aside, when Trump gave that speech in Congress and he said, America will never be a socialist country, Elizabeth Warren stood up and clapped. (laughs) Bernie Sanders did not. I should tell you all you need to know. Um, So let's see. I think that's all I'm going to cover today. I am running short on time. I did find the video that I was talking about the other day that I did not link, which is, uh, there's actually a few videos from The Economist and people have been talking about them in the comment section. I will link one or two today in the description box. 
they're good, insightful videos about it's not just you know you, you know the 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 mantra of plant trees, you know, is kind of short sighted and a little bit <clears throat> lacking in depth because you you know rewilding is a, is probably probably the best way to go and if you plant trees you know you got to be careful how many and where and what kind of tree you plant so they're, they're kind of giving a little little more a nuanced overview of the whole you know greening the earth idea um, they're good videos uh, they're informative I like them and uh, if you haven't seen them check them out I will link them below thank you so much for your eyes your ears and your conscience if you would like to support this channel you can do so at the links below until next time Peace.